Not everyone is perfect. Where at some things people exceed, others struggle. For many people, however, all they need is a helping hand in order to keep up with the crowd. And when it comes to railways, trains are not so different, as some of British Rail's early diesels pointed out. During the 1960s, diesel locomotive power was steadily replacing steam on British railways. Naturally, this came with some teething troubles, but for the most part, the diesels proved to be just as reliable as steam when it came to getting work done. There was, however, one aspect of operation where diesels often fell short compared to steam engines. Braking. Steam engines were not only much heavier on average than diesels, but could also rely on their tenders to provide extra braking when needed. Diesels, on the other hand, were lighter, had much smaller wheels and fewer of them to brake with compared to a standard eight-wheeled steam freight engine. This didn't matter too much when it came to passenger services or fitted goods trains as the trucks and carriages were equipped with air brakes. However, British Railways was still in possession of a significant amount of goods wagons that didn't have air brakes fitted, meaning the only braking power the trains had was the engine at the front and the guard's van at the back. Back. Naturally, poor braking on goods trains became a concern, especially on lines with steep grades, and so BR began looking for a solution. Eventually, someone figured that if tenders provided steam locomotives with better braking power, then why not give diesels tenders too? In 1960, three tenders were built in Glasgow to test this idea, these being made out of short metal frames mounted on two four-wheeled bogies which were equipped with air brakes. These tenders would be connected to the diesel pulling the train, and should the driver need extra brakes, they could apply the air brake on the tender, giving them a few extra tons of stopping power. The idea worked, and British Railways immediately put in an order for 119 more of these brake tenders from various works across the country. Rather than build them from scratch, most of the tenders were built out of old carriages. The frames would be modified to size, while the bogies they rolled on were taken from old LMS and LNER carriages that were being withdrawn, these being fitted with air braking equipment already, saving the need to spend time or money fitting them. The bodies were hollow and would be filled with scrap metal or poured concrete to provide them with the extra weight needed to brake effectively. To help make them more compatible with diesel engines, both practically and aesthetically, the tenders had a very low profile, allowing drivers to see over them. They were fitted with lamp brackets so the train's head code discs could be displayed at the front of the train, and their bodies were streamlined and painted the same shade of green with yellow at the front as the diesels, with the green later being swapped for blue when British Rail introduced their rail blue livery. The tenders each weighed 35 and a half tons. However, for some reason, the 10 built at Stratford were not only two tons heavier, but also built to look like the prototypes with angular, plain metal bodies. By 1965, all 122 were in service. Despite initially being built for use on the heavy grades in the northeast of England, the tenders eventually found themselves all over the country on unfitted freight trains, even getting as far as the southern region of the railway network. On heavier trains, it wasn't uncommon to see an engine with two tenders, usually with one in front of the engine and another one behind it. Where the tender was positioned seemed to be region-specific, as in the north, if only one tender was needed, it was often at the front being pushed by the engine, while in the south, drivers preferred to pull them instead. Why this difference in positioning, I'm not too sure. On numerous occasions, drivers with a tender in front of them would stop at signals set to danger, only for the tender to be slightly past the signal and compromise the block ahead. On top of that, engines with a tender were limited to 60 miles an hour while being pulled, and 45 miles an hour when being pushed, making them unideal for fast freight work. Despite their limitations, these tenders were a massive boon for many diesel engines, allowing them to handle unfitted freight wagons much easier, becoming a unique but not infrequent sight along the British Railway network. Their usefulness, however, wouldn't last forever. By the late 1970s, British Rail had upgraded or replaced most wagons that weren't fitted with air brakes, meaning the tenders now no longer served a use. They were slowly withdrawn from service throughout the 1980s and scrapped at various yards. 
The final two ended up at Barry Island Scrapyard in Wales, however, even these were cut up, with none of the 122 tenders being saved or preserved. Fortunately, years later in 2017, a brand new brake tender was built using parts of an old Mark I British Railways coach, and can be seen at the Great Central Railway in Leicestershire. While not exactly the most groundbreaking or significant piece of rolling stock to ever run on British rails, the brake tenders still played a big part in helping early diesels handle heavy goods that they otherwise would have struggled with. Just goes to show that even the most modern and seemingly up-to-date folks need a little help sometimes, and that no matter how small the deed, you'll always be remembered when you help others. Subscribe for more.